Hey everyone, I've got another spooktacular image for you today. Man, I just can't seem to let Halloween go. I promise this will be the last one. For now. So, I'd heard the term Wendigo before, but never really knew what it was until I was watching the Pet Cemetery remake recently. It was pretty meh. And heard it mentioned along with a quick shot of a drawing of one in a book. It piqued my interest, so I did a little research. According to Wikipedia, a Wendigo is a mythological creature or evil spirit that originates in the folklore of the First Nations people of Canada and the US. It's often said to be a malevolent spirit depicted as a humanoid creature with human-like characteristics that invokes feelings of insatiable greed and hunger, murder, and the desire to cannibalize other humans. Bitchin'. In my image, I'm going with the Hollywood representation, which mixes the traditional description of a Wendigo with English depictions of a werewolf into a more human-beast hybrid featuring antlers or horns, like what's seen in the 2021 film Antlers. Also, meh. But the creature was cool looking. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the breakdown and the time lapse, which you can skip to at this timestamp if you want. Be sure to give me a follow on Instagram, and please make sure to like this video and subscribe if you enjoy it. Alright, let's get working. I started off by bringing in this image of a trail leading to a cliff's edge and I masked away the background. Then I brought in this rocky ground texture and blended it into the ground of the previous image. This is just to make the ground area less bland. It's a little more interesting than just a plain grass texture. I next dropped in this first sky image and used warp to distort it into this arc shape. Then brought in another sky image, did the same warp and changed the blending mode to light and color. I thought having this distorted sky would add to the surrealness of the scene, but I ended up just painting my own clouds in as you'll see later. Continuing with building the foreground elements, I masked in this image of some boulders. This is what our beast will be standing on when we add them in later. Now for the background. I knew I wanted trees, a forest even, so that's what I used. A misty tree line. Then some even taller trees. And now some dead trees. It doesn't have to make any sense. In fact, not much in this image will. I'm going for pure visual aesthetics, baby. Indulge me. Like now I want some Stonehenge-esque pillars in here, so I'm just going to use this image to mask in some stone shapes. Oh yeah, that's cool. Now let's throw the Wendigo in there. In my first attempt at this image, I built the Wendigo piece by piece from various different images and, well, I hated it. But I found this model of one and decided to use it instead. It's not the version of the Wendigo I really wanted. I wanted the kind where the head was a skull. I could have made one and put it on this one's body, but I was too lazy at this point. And here's our unlucky hiker who's going to stumble upon this mythical creature. I wanted his arm out so he could be holding a torch or a flare or something, so I spent some time doing that. You can see how I did it in the time lapse. I wanted everything to look overall more dark and dreary, so I used a cloud brush and painted over the sky with some gray cloud cover. Now when the sky is dark and gray out in real life, it makes everything else less colorful, so I desaturated the elements that had too much color in the image. So with all the elements in place now, it's time to adjust their tones to all match. I clipped exposure adjustments to each element and made them darker, starting with the ground. Then the rocks, pillars, beast, and the man. Everything looks super dark now, but let's go ahead and add in some atmospheric haze to give the scene some depth and lighten things up a bit. First I'll put some more mist in front of the tree line. And then push the dead trees we added earlier into the background by lightening them up some. Then some haze and fog between the pillars and the creature. Alright, that's looking good. Now I'll add a shadow to the man to give him some dimension. Then do the same thing to the Wendigo. However, the Wendigo is a little too dark now, so I just clipped a levels adjustment to him to brighten him up overall while still keeping the dimension added with the shadows. And now I'll put a little mist around his feet. Next I added ambient shadows to everything coming from the sky. This extra shadow on the man here doesn't make sense yet, but it'll be caused by the flare he'll be holding in a minute. So since the Wendigo image I used was just like a model or something, it didn't have any colors or anything. It was just all plain gray. I was fine with the skin being gray, but went ahead and added a few colors to it just to give it some life, starting by adding some black to the hooves. Then I made the fingernails of the claws a brighter white, along with the teeth, gave the tongue a pink color, and the antlers a tan color. You'll see in the time lapse that I just painted over these parts with a color and used blend if to blend them in. 
Okay, so to start lighting the scene, I added an overall darkness to the image using the channel mixer. Then put a bright little spot down by the hoof. Again, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but there were just so many lines converging there, it felt like it needed to be a spot where a light was coming from so it could add some dimension to the creature. I don't know, whatever. I do what I want. Whatever, I do what I want. The main light source, however, will be a bright red light from the flare stick the man is holding. Or will be holding. Let's add that, shall we? There. All right, now let's light that sucker up. First, I added sparks by positioning this spark image and changing it to the screen blending mode and masking the sparks to just where I want them. Then I manually painted in the flame at the base of the flare. Then painted the main glow around that, followed by a larger glow reflecting off the environmental haze. I also manually painted red smoke coming from the flare. And as the smoke gets further away from the red glow, it should become more gray. So I continued the smoke with a gray color. I added an overall red color cast from the flare to the man, ground, and windigo by using a red color fill adjustment and using blend if to limit it to just the brighter areas and painted that in on a layer mask. Then I manually painted in brighter red highlights along the edges of the man and the windigo. Then on the man, since he's closest to the light source, painted in some bright white highlights. Now I'm going to make the beast's eyes glow. I used a green color to manually paint in some glowing eyes then added some more glowiness around them, then painted in green highlights on the nose and the horns that would be coming from those evil eyes. Now to make everything make even less sense thematically, but look cool visually, I wanted to put some pagan and runic symbols on these pillars. Like reading them off during some pagan ritual is what summoned the Wendigo and he's here to claim the souls of those who brought him into existence. Man, I feel you, buddy. I traced over them with a stone texture brush so they'd look like they had been carved into the stone. I then went over them with a very light blue glow so they'd look like they were glowing from the inside ever so slightly. It didn't really give the effect I was going for, but I still liked how it looked anyway. I tried painting some hair on the guy, but I realized later it looked a little mullety, so I'm just going to end up putting a hat on him later. First though, it's time for a little color grading. I'm first going to use a couple of custom actions that I tend to use pretty often as a first step when color grading artwork. Then I'll use a custom color lookup adjustment. And I mostly like how this looks, but that color lookup made the red lights pink, so I used selective color to make the reds red again. That's a good place to start with the color grade, but now I want to do some paint effects. First, I'll go over the whole image with a custom brush and the smudge tool. I've got a whole video that goes into more detail on how I do this here. Then, I added some paintbrush texture layers using the brush and techniques provided in this awesome video by Texture Labs. I'll put a link to mine and this video in the description. And to bring out those brush textures, I'll create a Smart Sharpen layer. Okay, now I'm ready to do some more color grading. Now when I'm not totally sure what I want to do next with color, I'll sometimes use the Infinite Color Panel plugin, which generates random color grades, and I'll just flip through some of those until I see something I like, and I'll build from there. So that's what these next couple of grades are. Along with a Curves Adjustment and another Color Lookup. I kind of felt that this white highlight along the crotchetal region of the Wendigo here was a little too bright, so I just darkened it down a little bit. Next, I used the Camera Raw filter to distort the image, pinching it in. This option is under the Optics panel. Again, no real reason other than I was just playing around and liked how it looked. Now, doing this messes up the edges of the image, so you can either crop the image in to remove them or attempt to repair it with a mix of Content Aware and the Clone Stamp. I chose the latter. I also added in a couple more dead trees behind the pillars on either side to fill in the empty space that's there now. Here I added some subtle outlines around the main elements of the image. It's not much, but it can add a nice little illustrated look to an image like this. I've gone into more detail on how I do it in other videos, and you'll also see it in the time lapse. Now there's just a few various little details I want to try and fix, starting with blending in this harsh line here by painting in some grass. Then I want to separate the edge of this pillar from the background by adding just the faintest hint of a line along the edge here. At this point, I still hadn't decided to put the hat on the guy yet, but I knew this little bit of texture in his hair was bothering me, so I removed it. Then took out this distracting white line in the corner here. I also wanted some separation between this pillar and the rocks, so I just painted in some mist between them. Here's where I finally decided to put a hat on the guy. I found a hat that matched the perspective and made sense as something a supremely unlucky hiker might be wearing and spent some time blending it in. 
I also thought the guy had just a teeny tiny bit too much contrast, so I lightly painted over him with some haze. For some final details, I added some dust particles. And a vignette, just to help focus the viewer's attention. Lastly, after really studying the image, I felt that too much focus was being drawn by the flare, since it's the brightest part of the image. I thought if maybe there was more going on with the Wendigo, it could help draw some of the focus away from the flare. Your attention will still go to the center where it's brightest, but it won't be because of just the flare, if that makes sense. In some depictions of the Wendigo, especially in that Antlers movie, they have this inner glow, so I made it look like his torso and veins were glowing. Not 100% sure how I feel about it, but there it is. I have a feeling that I'm going to want to revisit this concept in the future and take another stab at it. Be sure to let me know in the comments what you think. Also, let me know which interpretation of the Wendigo is your favorite. Or have you even heard of a Wendigo before? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.